Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Antonetti. And um, on today's subject, we're still looking in Ephesians chapter 6. We just started, actually, the armor of God, and there's so much food. Um, I've, I've been working on a book for a long time now, and just when I want to release it, I'm finding things that I have to, uh, I guess, better say it and correct. So please keep me in prayer for that. I do want to release this book soon. It's called Warrior's Call. And um, it's a great book. I'm sharing some things from the book, but also, of course, the scriptures themselves, they speak loud and clear. And so let's go into Ephesians chapter, uh, chapter 6, and let's read from the beginning, okay? And it says here, finally, and I'm looking at verse 10 only. Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of his mighty power. Now, the King James says, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and put on. Uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So this is what I want to talk about today. We talked about the finality, uh, the word final. Now, the, the Christian's most powerful stand must be purity. So no matter what we go through in life, understand that purity is the key to having a successful battle because you cannot put on the armor of God and go into battle if our life is not dedicated to holiness. There's no way that's going to happen. Holiness is the key for us to put on the armor and be effective and so it is the most powerful thing. And as a matter of fact, we have in Psalms 119, verse 1, which begins actually with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph, which represents the name of God, Yahweh. It says, Blessed are they whose ways are blameless or undefiled in the way of the Lord according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose ways are blameless who walk according to the law or the Torah of the Lord. Now, if you want to know more about these Psalms 119, we did all hundred. We did the 176 verses, word by word, letter by letter. We did 176 videos. You can go to YouTube for that and just type in Talk Straight Bible. Go to playlist and you will see Psalms 119 there. Very simple. But blessed are they whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law, the Torah of the Lord. In order for us to have a successful battle, we need to walk in holiness. First uh, Peter chapter 1, verse 16, it says, Be ye holy, because I am holy. Now, Paul's operation of the gospel, that's what I call, in my book, you're going to see, it's called the operation of the gospel, that we are operators of the gospel. So Paul, uh, in, his, in his missionary trips that were planned very carefully with the sole intention of spreading the gospel, he launched the word of God by reason and thought of the scriptures and presented clearly the salvation of Jesus Christ. Remember that our warfare, finally, when we come to the point that we say, God, I cannot do this. I'm at the point of where I just don't know where to go. He says, stand. And so here we have the finality of our, our own strength and even all the things that we've done that is possible to make it happen. Remember what he told the rubber belt. It is not by, listen, he says, it's not by might. It's not by power but by my spirit, say of the Lord. Amen. And it's interesting that his spirit lives in our spirit and he gives us the strength to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, he was a fiery preacher, preacher but he was also a military man. Paul did not play games when it came to the father of lies. The, Ephesians, the, the church at Ephesus was facing a vehement giant. They were facing uh, philosophies, um, ideologies, reasons, the God of Diana and um, other things were happening there. They practiced magic arts. I mean, it was just a city full of paganism and Paul had to deal with this. And after he established the church, he wanted them to know that they had a battle on their hands, but it was spiritual. And that's important. Paul's mind and heart were concerned with the truth and the doctrines of God. 
He lived a life of high urgency and was possessed with a sincere desire to bring the gospel to areas that were not yet penetrated. And this is what he says of himself as long as the other apostles. For we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Understand that every battle has its protocol. And watch this, which are measured and governed by the laws which are permissible for warfare. Now, let me explain that. We can go out and do warfare on a physical, doing uh, standing and, uh, how you say, pro protesting, protesting um, things that we feel that are illegal, but we have to do it in a legal way. Otherwise, we're breaking the protocol of warfare. Warfare has its protocols. You know, if you catch a general, you don't you don't treat the general as you did the other prisoners. They had, they had um, a special treatment for them because that's the, that's the art of war. And so when you break that protocol, then that's it. We have total warfare. Well, understand this, that there's a protocol even in the spiritual enemies, for they are for in independence. Watch this. They're for but dependent on each one another, and every one of them has a different authority. Now watch this. He says this, for we are not fighting against human beings, but against wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world. That's the first one. The rulers, that's the second. Authorities is the third and cosmic powers of this dark age. So understand that we have a protocol and there are levels of authority and we have four enemies at least that are warring against the church of the living God. And that's why it's important for you to be ready and in your finality that you made up your mind and to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look, for example, I told you, uh, when you look at a, 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 well, a very strong man, I guess, um, wow, there's so many strong men in the world. But you look at a man who, who's built up and he's strong and, and he's powerful. You have women today who are like that also. And they had all these muscles and everything. You look at them, you don't have to touch their bodies to know that there's muscle there. You don't have to touch them to know that there's strength there. Because what they're manifesting in their muscles is that there is power there. Now, I don't have many muscles, but I have some. <laughs> so this is the point. That when we look at the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord and what he did in the Old Testament and all the stories and how he delivered people, how he fought for them. We can be strong in the power of that testimony. It's as though God is flexing his muscles in the Old Testament and showing us, look what I did. Just read how I delivered Daniel. Just read how I delivered the three Hebrew children. Just read how I took them out of Egypt and took them through the Red Sea. Just read how I, 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 um, I diminished the, the, the armies of Egypt. And as you read the testimonies, you can see even, even Paul in chapter 12 of Romans says, by the mercies of God. In other words, in view of God's mercy, look back into what he did. And present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Folks, this is warfare at its best. And so we have to follow the protocol at every vicinity. Every vicinity has its protocols. You know something? When Jesus cast out the devils from that man that was in the tomb cutting himself, he said, what's your name? He said, my name is Legion. Now, some said it's 6,000 demons. I do not believe that. That is not the word there in the Greek. When you study that, you had, you had, um, you had men who were over 50, over 100, and then you had a cohort, which was Cornelius. He was over many thousands of men. But here is not, that word is not a cohort. So he was filled with demons. But when Jesus cast them out, they said, do not cast us out of the vicinity because they still had work there. They were assigned to that vicinity. So understand this. That's why I look at, at, at as what's happening today. It's the same evil spirits that worked in the time of the Old Testament. They're doing the same thing today. Over and over in every generation, they build it up. They do the same thing. 
but they build it up because the technology is different. And so it's the same lustful spirits, the same spirits of war, the same things that have been happening in the Old Testament is the same enemy that is at work today. And this is what we're standing against. We must be strong against these spirits that are working in vicinities. You may be, you, let me tell you something. When we leave Staten Island and we go to Brooklyn, there are different spirits working there. When you go from there to Manhattan, there are different spirits working there. When you go to the Bronx, believe me, we lived in the Bronx. There's different spirits there. And so although there are different authorities, remember, you have wicked spirits. I mean, these spirits are in authority and they're over authority and they're over authority. And this is what we're fighting. And the Bible tells us that the children of this world, the spirit, the prince, the spirit of the prince of the palities of the principalities in the air are working in the children of disobedience. They're working in the authorities of this earth. The Bible tells us that the God of this world, small g, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the glory of God in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are totally blind. They cannot comprehend it. And so these spirits are working in authorities. That's why I look at uh, today, man is still trying to solve problems without God. I believe that this city, if our government turned truly to Jesus Christ and began to cry out to him, we would see a miracle. But remember, whenever God wants to punish a nation that is disobedient to his word, he raises up enemies. And if you think I'm kidding, look into this book because there were times that he had to raise up evil kings to punish Israel. Didn't he do that with Nebuchadnezzar? And yet he called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. Nebuchadnezzar came and took Israel, Jerusalem. He took it captive and took people to Babylonia. And they, they suffered there for 70 years. And even within that, that 70 years, God was merciful. In order for the warrior of Christ to fire out the gospel, the protocols must be obeyed both spiritual, spiritually and physically. Mm. Now, we do go to war physically. But understand, every war... Understand now, every war is spiritual. It starts first in the spirit because there's agitation against people and we come against one another and we have a difference and all of a sudden we got to split and there's a war. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see many churches doing that today. You start off good, you have good doctrine, you're, you're keeping it real, you're happening and all of a sudden you got well, that one person who says, I don't believe what you believe about this. And they start fighting against one another. And before you know it, that guy says, I'm out of here. I'm going to go and I'm going to start my own ministry. And people who have seen this says, I'm going to follow, I'm going to follow, uh, you know, John, because John has something better than you have to offer. And this is a split. And folks, this is a manifestation and a very, very strong scheme of the enemy to divide the body. I believe that racism is ugly. But I believe that the segregation of churches is the worst racism that we could ever encounter. And I'm talking about because of doctrine. We have to be very careful because why? Because God wants us to be at peace. And so Paul launched the word of God by reason through the scriptures and he made it clear that Christ was crucified. Instead of Paul, watch this, instead Paul was steadfast, immovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord because he knew that his labor, his labor was not in vain. The mind of Paul was concerned with the truth and the doctrines of God. Folks, how are we fighting this spiritual warfare? Right here. We are fighting it by words and authority. Are you hearing me? You've heard it speak to the powers. The only way that we can fight this battle is through words. That's why when the enemy came to Jesus and he said, if you are the son of God, truly the son of God, tell these stones to turn into bread and eat. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word here, word is rhema, the bar, that which has been spoken 
a line of authority. That's why we have to be careful. Now listen to what I'm saying. The lines that come from my mouth concerning the enemy. How do we get rid of the enemy? The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To do what? To pull down strongholds and every imagination that has set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we bring every thought to captivity, to the obedience of Christ. And once our obedience has been established, we are ready to punish every act of disobedience. That means that once we establish a ground and we're standing and we're strong in the power of the Lord's might, he says, don't let anything in. Soon as it comes to your door, don't let it in because it will come to bring you down. That's his purpose. There are five battle conditions for God's warriors. Number one, identification with the cross. Because our connection to the cross, we should, watch this, conclude our life as being, watch this, scarred with the same nails, the thorns, the stripes, the spear on the side of our lives that we are indeed slaves of Jesus Christ. I love what Paul said. I, this is a specific verse of scripture in Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. My wife made a, a little portrait of it, a, a picture. You know, she, she, we used to do these things called scripture pictures. Before people were even doing things, we always were doing things uh, ahead. And we would were, we, we were buy frames and we decided to pick, put pictures and scripture pictures. And I tell you, we made dozens of them. But this one, I remember most of all, Paul says, let no man trouble me anymore, for I bear the marks of Jesus Christ. And when you bear the marks of Jesus Christ, no man can trouble you. You're not going to have any problem because you're dead to this world. And when, you're, when you come to the finality of your decision, be strong in the scriptures. Be strong in the testimony of Jesus Christ. Watch this, for the Bible says that this enemy was hurled down into the earth and he is angry, he has wrath, and he's been uh, attacking the earth and he wants humanity to go to hell with him. We know we're talking about Bigfoot here, but there's a bigger foot in heaven that stamps him down, puts him down. And let's listen, watch this now. Here's my foot. <laughs> When he comes, this is my foot. Oh, when he tells you, you're not going to make it, you're going to lose your mind. You tell him 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Boom, there's strength there. When he says, uh, you know, you're, 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 just, you're just not going to be able to make it to the end, you can tell him in, in, in Philippians Chapter 1, verse 6, being confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in me is going to continue and to finish it until the day that Jesus Christ comes back. This is your sword, folks, and we're going to be getting into that, your identification with the cross. To conclude, he says, let no man trouble me because I bear the scars in my body of Jesus Christ. Number two. Strive for perfection. The scriptures helps us to conclude our lives according to the truth. If we live according to the truth, then we must strive for perfection. We must listen to the appeals of Holy Scripture. We must agree with one another living in peace and let the love of God rule our hearts. And this is what 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 11 says, And now, my friends, goodbye. This is what he's saying. Strive for perfection. Listen to my appeals. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Number three, Christ must be our substance of life, being in union with him. I'm talking about six things, and we're going to finish with this. In connection with the Lord Jesus Christ being our life, our substance, and our faith, we must continue to be joyful in union with him and never put away the scriptures but have a continual repetition of it in our lives. Look what Paul says in conclusion. Remember the word final, in conclusion. My friends, be joyful in your union with the Lord. And don't, watch this, I don't mind repeating what I have written before. And you will be safer if I do so. Repetition is good for the heart. Number four, 
we must have the same attitude armed with servanthood. It is important for Christians to have the same attitude and the same feelings of love toward one another, and we must be kind and remain humble, having the same attitude of Christ. In conclusion, Paul says in Philippians 4, 8, My friends, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, and right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Number five. The attitude and love of Christ must also be exemplified in our lives. The greatest defense that we can have as Christians is to remain in the direction of Scripture and to be faithful as servants of God. Paul says, uh, Peter says in chapter 3, verse 8, to conclude, you must all have the same attitude and the same feelings, loving one another, to be kind and humble with one another. Number six, last one. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 tells us children no longer toss to and fro that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine every time we hear something watch this now every time you hear something it's a wind coming out of a man's mouth but is it the wind of the Holy Spirit the Bible says that we hear a wind and we don't even know where it's coming from. But the Bible also tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, that it says, test the spirits to see whether they be God. Why? Because many false prophets have gone out from among us, but they're false prophets. And it says this, that we should no longer be tossed. The Lord desires that we would stand through the word of God and be established in the principles, laws, its, its commands. He wants us to be established. Then we shall no longer be children carried by every wind or wave of doctrine. Remember, we have waves coming out of, out of our mouth. Hallelujah. Blown about every shifting wind of the teaching of deceitful people who lead others into error by the tricks they invent. Once the mind has been finally made up, the preparation for strong is needed. What you need to do, what is it that you need to do to be strong? We're going to continue this. This is awesome. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spiritual day. And remember, finally, be strong in the power of the Lord's might. Amen.